Welcome to episode 60, What's Your Style Superpower? Along with the way you dress, your style expresses your personality. When you're tapped into what your style truly is, you're honoring yourself in the best way possible. And along with that comes your style superpower. Your style superpower is the gift that comes with your inherent style, and it's how you show up as your most authentic self. In this episode, you'll discover what your style says about you, how to find your style, the real reason many women struggle with knowing what their style is, how your style and your personality are interconnected, and what makes you unique. But first... Are you ready to feel confident in the body you have right now? Discover the top three style secrets behind a fabulous you in 22 to help you look put together and feel confident in your outfits without wasting money on clothes that don't fit or wasting time standing in your closet wondering what to wear. I want to share with you my free video series, Top 3 Style Tips to Help You Get Dressed Confidently in 2022. I want to help you make this your best year yet. Lesson 1 is color confidence. In this lesson, you'll discover your number one wardrobe color, and it's probably not black. I'll help you understand why black is not your best color, and you'll find out how to make your eyes, your hair, and your skin sparkle. Lesson number two, your best fitting clothes. Discover how to eliminate the number one wardrobe mistake women make. Find out how to deal with your most challenging body parts so your clothes fit properly, and know the true cost of the clothes you buy. In lesson three, we're going to talk about how to keep your style fresh. Find out the secret to never be bored with your clothes again. Discover what it means to reframe your wardrobe and learn how to reimagine the wardrobe of your dreams. So click the link below in the show notes and grab these secrets. I want to help you look fabulous and feel your confident best this year because you are already beautiful and you are worth it. Grab that free video series and I look forward to helping you feel amazing. Welcome to Style by Mary Michelle, a podcast designed to empower you through personal style. I'm your host, Mary Michelle Nidefer, a master style coach, founder of Style Finder Boutique, and creator of the Style Finder ID system. I'm here to help you know what to wear, how to wear it, and how to get dressed in seven minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, friends, and welcome back. How are you today? I hope you're having a beautiful week and just really doing something special for yourself today. This is the first day of February, and to me, I just cannot believe that January went by so quickly. January is an interesting month. You know, it's my birthday month, uh, but it has been an interesting month for us, and I feel like Um, The past few weekends have been filled with either snow or calls for snow or preparing for snow and just being hunkered Mm -hmm. down. And I tell you what, it's given me a little bit of uh, spring fever. I am ready to get out and (laughs) have some beautiful weather and explore and just, you know, really be able to get out again. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we are going to have some spring-like weather and we'll be able to start talking about spring fashion because I am super, super excited. Now, I'm going to be heading to Atlanta. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, I head to Atlanta uh, this week, Wednesday through Friday for my first trade show of the year. Um, I don't know if you know, but I am, you know, I'm the founder of Style Finder Boutique and I am also the buyer. I've been the buyer since day one and I love what I do. I, it's been a learning experience, but I really love buying for the boutique and visualizing my clients, who's going to wear this, how's this going to fit, what's this going to go with, because I guess because of everything that we do in the boutique, it's all about wardrobing our clients. And I am not a big fan of buying outfits from a lot of our vendors. I buy very differently from a lot of people. And it's interesting because my vendors will say, well, everybody else is buying this. Don't you want that too? No, 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 no. I've got other pants coming from another vendor that are going to be better. 
And, and I'm not afraid to tell them that because, you know, I really try to find what each company, what each vendor does best and go deep in that and focus on that. Just because one of my favorite vendors decides to open up a, you know, whole line of jeans or tops or get into something that they don't normally carry does not mean I'm going to buy it. So trust your gut, trust your instincts, you know, when you're buying for yourself, but also if you're in a boutique and you're buying for your store, trust you're an intuition. You know, I, I could do a whole podcast on buying for the store, <laughs> maybe one of these days, but it's just, it's an interesting process. So if you'd like to see some behind the scenes, follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's style by Mary Michelle and at shop style finder. I'm going to be shooting some behind the scenes, Instagram stories, and you know, taking you behind the scenes, helping you to, or introducing you to a few of our favorite vendors. Uh, some are a little crazy. Some are very cool. And I cannot wait to see what they've got. We're actually going to be breaking fall. So here we are in the cusp of spring and I'm already thinking about the next season, but that's, you know, it's a cycle of fashion. So but today we're talking about style and our proprietary style finder ID system is something that I created in 2010. Now I became a style coach in 2008, just <laughs> really, I don't know if I've told the full story, but it just it kind of fell in my lap. Women started asking me, can you help me get dressed? Can you help me shop? I'm like, uh, that's what I'm good at. And you know what they say, it's the thing that comes easiest to you that you should get paid the most for. So it was a light bulb moment, but really for me, it's so much more than a career. It is my purpose. I feel that my purpose here in the world is to empower women through personal style. And it starts with the elements of style that I teach, you know, looking at your colors, your body type. I think so many women want to look outside of themselves when it comes to finding their style. But what they don't realize is that we all have a style. And yes, you, I'm talking to you right now who feels like you don't have a style. If you're shaking your head saying, yeah, I don't have a style, this is for you. Um, now, today we're talking about what's your style superpower, but we're also going to be talking about what your style archetype might mean. And if you have no idea what your style is or what words to associate with it, then I invite you go to our website, shopstylefinder.com sweet quiz and it'll come back and it'll help you understand a little bit more about your style, a little bit more about dressing for your body type and really how you can hone in on what's right for you because that's where the breakdown happens. It And I think I see so many women, ladies, I promise you, I'm not going to go off on a tangent too long, but I see so many women or talk to so many women who tell me that they feel confused and they feel overwhelmed and they walk into a store and they either go find another pair of black pants. And I promise you, you probably don't need another pair unless you've changed sizes. You probably don't need another pair of black pants or another black shirt or another white shirt. But what you are probably missing are the pieces that are right for you. So take the time to really understand what your style is and what is right for you. If you're buying all these black pants and you don't even love black pants, go find something else. What about purple or red? Or we just got these beautiful uh, jeans in the boutique that are this gorgeous jade green. We called them kale me crazy, K-A-L-E, because they're kind of the color, almost the color of kale, like a light kale, but they're a beautiful green. And like, why not? Why feel like you're stuck in a box and you always have to wear blue jeans? I love blue jeans, but I also love my colored jeans, so it's a great way to make a simple shift that can help you feel like you're up to date, like you're doing something different, like you're not stuck in a rut. And sometimes it's just that one thing. All right, so your style superpower. So let me just give you a little bit of history. I created this system in 2010 after working with my clients for two years and hearing women say, I don't have a style. I don't know what my style is. It's all over the map. I've lost it. And I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean you don't have a style? Like everybody's got a style. Everybody has a style. And it's when you can really get clear on what your style is that you're not tempted when you walk into that boutique and see a gorgeous sales associate dressed to the nines or see a fabulous outfit on the mannequin and think, well, that's what I should wear. Not necessarily. What's right for you? It can help you really zero in on what's your authentic style 
And I promise you, that is where the magic happens. It's not in wearing an outfit that you saw Reese Witherspoon wear or wearing an outfit that your BFF rocked uh, at this event last week. It is wearing what lights you up, whatever that is. And I hear so many shoulds. I hear so many women shoulding all over themselves. Well, I should wear that. I should be more dressed up. I should wear more suits. I should wear more something. No, you shouldn't. The only thing I think that you should wear is whatever the hell you want to wear. Whatever lights you up, whatever makes you feel good, whatever flatters your body. And I promise you, it's going to be different for every single woman listening to this podcast. There is no one size fits all. There is no uniform or prerequisite when it comes to style. It is a personal and individual thing. And I encourage you to take the time to discover what your style is and start by taking our mini quiz. Just, it just, it's like a compass. It just gets you pointed in the right direction. And from there, it, the floodgates will open. I promise you when you start focusing and at least know, Hey, I need to be pointing towards romantic because that's what my style is. Or I need to be more, or I am Not I need to be, but I am more sporty and I've been trying to be something else. Honor who you are. This is all about being your most beautiful, the most beautiful, authentic version of you. Now, all right. So I have eight archetypes. If you do go take our our style ID mini quiz, then you're going to get one of five archetypes. But if you work with me privately, in our Style Finder 101 sessions, which I'm going to be shifting those soon. I am only going to be offering those through the month of February. So if you would like to do one of those where we do a deep dive, your personal coloring, your face shape, your body type, your personal scale, your personal style, this is the last month I will be offering that because I am being called to do some different things, which you guys will be hearing about first but I'm not really ready to roll out all the details yet. But just know if you'd like to uh, learn more, you can book a call with me and I would love to work with you. I've worked with clients all over the world and I would be honored to help you do that. But just know that <laughs> this is going to be it. So do it quick. Um, so your stat and when you, we work together privately, you'll take the full style finder ID assessment that gives you three words. Now my style ID it has shifted a little bit. And it, I think it's because my self-image has shifted and, you know, our self-image dictates who we are. Right. But I used to be dramatic, romantic, and sporty. And then I thought, I thought I was classic romantic and dramatic, but I've realized I'm still dramatic and romantic and now classic. Dramatic for me is the, the first word because, well, let's talk about that. What it means to be dramatic is being unique, wearing something that's different, standing out and making a statement. And I tell you what, one of the worst things in the world is if I ever show up somewhere and somebody else is wearing the same thing. No, that's like my kryptonite. I hate that. I hate that. Anybody else? Can you relate to that? But I just, you know, that's my thing because I am born to be unique. Now it's so fascinating. What has come up for me since I created the system 12 years ago is that it's everything you do. Your style is not just what you wear. It's who you are. It's how you show up. It's everything you exude. So it ties into your personality. It's how you decorate your home, the car you drive, the food you eat. It's everything you do. And so dramatics. All right, ladies, this is your permission slip. You are born to be seen and to stand out. Not that you need permission. But I think a lot of women feel that they can't stand out or they shouldn't stand out. If you are dramatic and you know who you are, you are born to be seen. A lot of dramatics are speakers or actors or theatrical or uh, musicians or they're songwriters or they're on stage in some way. Dramatics are born to be seen. That's just who we are. And so if you're dramatic, you're born to be seen And your style is meant to be an authentic representation of that. And so if you're attracted to wearing your hair, dyeing your hair funky colors or wearing clothes that are unique and different, you seek things out and you put things together in your own unique way, embrace that. Your style superpower 
is that you're born to be seen. You're here to share a message. You're here to entertain, enlighten, inspire, but you're meant to be seen. So don't ever dim your light. Don't ever think that it's not okay to be seen. Being dramatic has some challenges. I can certainly attest to that. Uh, there are certainly a lot of things that go along with that, but I've done a lot of work and I, you know, I'm embracing my dramatic side. I've embraced it for a long time, but I think for a while I was in what I would call my shadow side. And my shadow side is when I was wearing things just for the sake of attention. It was attention getting for all the wrong reasons. I, I wasn't being seen for who I was. I wanted to be noticed for my clothes. And that just, you know, that's not really, that's not when it's going to feel good. So if something doesn't feel good when it comes to your style, trust that. So, all right. So the second word is romantic. Now this is my secondary word and such a, I love this. I worked with a client yesterday. She was romantic and love, love, love this word. Um, but romantic, this is all about being unabashedly feminine, but also being a storyteller. Romantics are the ones that are going to tie in the sense of history, the sense of the past, and maybe you're attracted to vintage or boho, but it's really about telling the story. And romantics, your superpower, you have two actually. One is bringing beauty and pleasure into our lives. And the other is the ability to be a storyteller. You know, it's so fascinating watching people on social media and you can tell who the storytellers are and you can tell who the romantics are. Some people just, it just comes naturally. And it just flows. And so if you're romantic, just know that you're born to be in your feminine essence. You are born to show up as the beautiful woman that you are and to indulge in pleasure. Because when you give, your, when you give yourself permission for pleasure, for beauty, it helps others to see that that's possible for them. You're here maybe to create pleasure or to create beauty. You know, a lot of romantics are artists. Not everyone, but I think a lot of romantics have that creative side to them. And maybe your archetype, your archetype could be the lover or it could be the creator, but you're about the divine art of birthing something and loving others. Just bringing love into the world, bringing pleasure and beauty into the world and telling the story in a beautiful way. Now, if you're contemporary, contemporary really is about wearing things that are on trend. Now, you notice I'm not saying trendy because at our age, trendy is not where we want to be, but we do want to be on trend, which is much different. What that means is that you follow the trends, but you're not a fashion victim. Fashion victim is somebody who's wearing something just because it's trendy. No, you're wearing what's right for you, but you know what the trends are. And then you can bring in those items that work for you. Now, the contemporaries, ladies, you are the influencers of the world. You are the ones that we see on Instagram who are rocking your style. You are the ones who are out there making a difference. Your branding archetype is the ruler. You want to be in charge. You want to be the leader. You want to be the best. And you are driven to be the first. Classics. All right, classics. I think you know who you are. There are a lot of women who have classic in their style, style finder ID. And classic really means that you, your style transcends the trends. It's almost opposite contemporary, but it doesn't mean you don't ever pay attention to the trends. It just means that your style day in and day out is going to be more understated, traditional, um, and just simple. I think classics, it's interesting because if you ever see a top 10 list, top 10 list of the items all women must have in their closets, which I am not a fan of, but typically it is based on a classic wardrobe. Now, if we work together, I'm going to give you a top 10 list of items that I would recommend for your archetype, because if you're dramatic, your list is going to be very, very different than a classic. And that little trench coat, the little white button down shirt or the white t-shirt, not really going to work for you. So doesn't mean you can't wear those. It just means that those are not 
what you are going to build your wardrobe around. Your pieces, your colors, your shapes will be very different. Now, classics, wearing something that transcends the trends. Simple, understated, clean lines. And your superpower is that you uphold tradition. I have found that a lot of classics uphold the traditions of the past, and they love heirlooms, family heirlooms, passing down family heirlooms to their children. You know, maybe it's a family heirloom that's a watch or a ring, or it was your grandmother's wedding gown or something, but they're the ones who uphold the traditions. And that's a wonderful thing in our world. Shadow side of the classic, though, is falling into a rut, sameness, looking matronly, wearing something that just doesn't light you up. And you put it on day in, day out. You feel like it's your uniform. You're like, well, I guess this is just what I wear. No, it doesn't mean you can't pay attention to the trends. It just means that your basic look is more understated. And then you look at to the trends for maybe an injection of color, or maybe you update your, your accessories. Sporty. All right, sporty gals. Sporty means comfort. The essence of it is comfort. And this I found is present in a lot of women and a lot of professional women tell themselves, I can't be comfortable at work. And they sacrifice comfort, which you should never, ever do. In fact, one of the big prerequisites when I'm buying for the boutique, things need to be comfortable. Fabrics need to feel good uh, and it needs to be comfortable. You will not find as one of our clients, Rachel, she was on our, uh, we do live shows, uh, Camelia, uh, our head stylist, she does live shows every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, on the Style Finder app and in our Facebook group, which there are links to in the show notes if you'd like to join us. They're a lot of fun. Uh, but last week, Rachel was referring to crunchy denim. And if you think about a jean jacket from you know the 80s or the 90s, it's stiff, it's crispy, it's crunchy. Does it really fit your body, right? And especially if you're sporty, you don't want crunchy. You want feel good. You want comfort. And so some of the denim brands that we carry now, Liverpool is one of our favorite. We have these beautiful longer jean jackets in right now that move with your body. They're not boxy. They're not crunchy. They're not crispy. They feel good. They stretch. They've got movement and they just work for the body. Sporties, you gals, keep it real. Sporties are just all about being truthful, being authentic, being fresh, optimistic, bright, cheerful. Now, the downside of sporty is waking up and just wearing your yoga pants every day. That is not what sporty is all about. Or your sweatpants or your joggers and a, you know, <laughs> pajamas, whatever, something comfort. Being comfortable doesn't mean you can't look polished and put together. And so sporty, when you're hiding out, yeah, it's going to be yoga pants and a t-shirt, right? And I hear, I hear from you. I hear from a lot of you guys. Yeah, yoga pants and a t-shirt. What could you do? What one thing could you do to elevate yoga pants and a t-shirt? Maybe you swap out the t-shirt for a cute top. Doesn't mean you can't wear the yoga pants, but it's how you wear the yoga pants. Okay, so pay attention to that. But Sporty, your branding archetype, you are the hero or the explorer. So if you're a business owner, you want to be your client's hero. You want to save the day. Or you're the explorer, the adventurer. Maybe you're chartering new territory. You're pioneering a new path. You're, you're, you have courage. You're brave. You're doing things differently. All right, so delicate. Delicate is really, it's about subtle femininity. The delegates of the world, typically they are delicate. I found, you know, petite, um, delicate facial features, delicate bone structure, and they want things that are subtly feminine. Unlike romantic, romantic is about unabashedly feminine. Delicate is just that little hint of femininity. Very subtle. A lot of times, often delicate is paired with classic. Um, those two work really well together, but it's just that subtle, that little hint. In fact, one of our clients uh, she is, it was classic and delicate. And she kept saying, you know, I'm feeling like something's missing. And what was missing, she works in the banking realm. She was wearing very structured shirts and her look felt very masculine. It was very classic, but she was missing that delicate portion. And so the delicate for her wasn't her primary word, but it was her se secondary word. And your style, it, it's all about a balance. It's not about just one word, but your del the delicates 
of the world remind us of our femininity, to remind us that it can be soft and that's important, that it doesn't have to be overt, that it can be really subtle. But that subtle femininity, when it's important to you and it's not present, you will notice. I've had clients tell me, I remember talking with a client one time who lived across the country. She had very short, spiky hair. She was, I think she was dramatic and delicate. And she was very much in her dramatic, very much in her masculine, her yang, her, um, just her masculine energy. And she, she felt that she said, something's out of balance. I said, here, you know, it's the delicate that's missing. And she went to go put, put on some subtly, um, feminine earrings. So they were very feminine, but they weren't overt. And she called me and she was like, oh my gosh, like that made all the difference. Now I feel like I've got that 20% present. I've got that subtle femininity and it just softened everything. And so the delegates remind us of our femininity. Now the delicate for your branding archetype, you are the innocent. All right. Next up, we have natural. The naturals, I tell you what, I have a lot of clients who are natural. Maybe they're natural and classic. Actually, if you're natural classic, that's the girl next door. And classic natural, that's the genuine. Those are probably my two most popular uh, style archetypes. But the natural, I tell you what, I, I can tell a natural when they walk in the store because they walk around touching all the fabrics. They're touching, touching, you know, it's got to feel good. Fabrics that feel good to the touch and soft against the skin is what is most important to the natural. And so if that's what's most important to you, then it can be really easy for naturals and for sporties because of comfort. If those are what's most important, it can be really, really, really easy to fall into a rut. And so what that means is pay attention to what else, what else, just because the fabric feels good doesn't mean it's going to look good on you. But you don't have to sacrifice comfort for style. You can absolutely have both. But the natural, your archetype is the nurturer. You're the caring. You're the organic, homespun, just feel good, rustic, rough hewn. Yeah, I could have all these words that, that I have listed on the archetypes that I relate to these. And natural is just just that, very natural, very organic, very understated, no muss, no fuss. And uh, as I mentioned, your shadow side, though, can be you've know, fallen into a rut. Maybe you're hiding your shape, you're hiding out, um, but you are the also the nurturer. And that's your superpower. Now, my last one is whimsical. Whimsical. I love whimsical. Actually, when I first created my style ID quiz, I was dramatic, romantic, and whimsical. And that that has a, that third word has evolved over the years, which I'll be honest, we all have multiple words present for us. Pri your primary word, your secondary word may change. It's rare that it does, but that supporting word I have found will evolve depending on what your lifestyle is like. Your style isn't just one and done. It's not just, okay, here it is. I'm dramatic, romantic, and whimsical, and that's what I'm going to be forever in a day. Doesn't mean that that whimsical may not come back sometime. But for a while, I was sporty because it was about comfort. And I think that was in a phase where I was getting up early, taking my kids to school, doing a lot of running around, being in mom mode. And now that my kids are a little bit older, it just has shifted a little bit. And as some things have shifted for me personally, I think the classic, it's more about the elegance and the understated, um, but whimsical. I love whimsical. And sometimes I do play, play into this, but the whimsical, this is the playful, the unexpected. And I love whimsical. Whimsical, the, if there were a color that I would associate with whimsical, it would be, and I wish I could describe this color to you, but it's a pink. It's not, it's almost a bubblegum pink, but it's got a little undertone of purple, just a hint. So it's almost an orchid, but it's not really, really bright. In fact, when I was creating this quiz, I had this beautiful sculpture from, um, oh, I forgot his name, the guy who did the whirly gigs, Vollis Simpson. So if you're from North Carolina, I'm sure you've heard of him. If you're not, go Google Vollis Simpson. <laughs> he unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but we went out to his whirly gig park uh, in, I think it's in Lukama or Wilson. 
which is still out there. You can go out there and just, you know, hang out, see all his amazing whirly gigs. He is a, um, a, what is it called? A folk, a folk artist. Um, what's the name for that? There is a name for that that I cannot remember. Um, and now that's going to drive me crazy, but whatever he is, it, it's a folk artist, um, outsider artist, I believe is the name of it. Um, but I got to meet him and I had one of his sculptures and it was based in a uh, tire. And I have a funny story about that <laughs> that I can tell you about later. But um, the tire uh, was the base of it. And then it was just the standing whirligig. And so when the wind would blow, the whirligig would spin. But one of the predominant colors was this whimsical pink. And I was staring at that when I was creating this quiz in my sitting in my studio and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's whimsical pink. That's my whimsical. That's the fun. That's the playful. That's the hint of fun. And the whimsical, you know, I have so many um, archetypes or words and style icons that are associated with all of these. Whimsical, I would think of like Diane Keaton or Iris Apfel. It's that what's unexpected, which is actually, if you ever want to get bust out of a style rut, that is one question you can ask yourself that will help you to shift your look. What's unexpected? You'll put things together in new and different ways. And maybe you'll wear green jeans with a purple shirt, or maybe you'll wear hot pink booties with, you know, black pants, but it's that little subtle piece. Maybe it's a word. If it's your primary word, it's going to be like full on whimsical. And I have clients who are like that, but more often than not, maybe it's paired with classic when it's classic and whimsical. A lot of women describe their style as classic with a twist. It's that little edge and your superpower is that you make others smile. You keep it light. You keep it playful. You keep life fun. And whimsical can be such a great word. They're all such great words. So, um, but I'll, I'll tell you my quick story about that um, whirly gig. I don't have that anymore because when I went through a divorce several years ago and I was in the process of moving, I went to the house and put that in my car. And then my kids and I went to the YMCA. And I opened the trunk up and I noticed that there was a black widow in the base of that tire. And we were at the YMCA here in Raleigh and we went to work out and I noticed that there was a black widow in there. And I thought, oh my God, I can't have that in the car with my kids. So I didn't know what to do. So I took that sculpture and I just took it out of my car and I set it on the sidewalk. And I thought, you know what? This is an expensive sculpture. It's a unique one of a kind, but I, I cannot have a black widow in the car with my kids. They were young and I just set it on the sidewalk for somebody to take. And I'm sure somebody is out there enjoying that world of gig now. And I hope it brings them as much joy as it bring, as it brought me. But I didn't feel like it was worth risking our safety. I have a fear of black widows. My brother used to catch them when I was growing up, but I have, I shouldn't say fear. I have a great respect for black widows. I wasn't going to kill it. I wasn't going to bother it, but I just did not want it in the car with me. So that is my story about my whimsical whirly gig. Ladies, I hope this has helped you to understand a little bit more about your style and about what your style superpower is, because your style is all about who you are. And when you can honor what your style is and really see the good in it, I think so many women judge themselves and think, well, my style's all wrong, but no, it's all right. It's all right. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. And you are fabulous as you are. And sometimes it just takes a reframe. So honor what these superpowers are. I'll go back through them real quick. Dramatic. Your superpower is you are born to be seen. Romantic. You are the storyteller. You're also about helping us to bring pleasure and beauty into our lives. Contemporary. You are the influencer. Classic. You're all about upholding family traditions. Sporty. You keep it real. Delicate. You remind us of our subtle femininity. Natural. You are the nurturer. You help us to feel cared for. And whimsical. You make others smile. So embrace it. Whatever your archetype is, if you don't have any idea what your style is, go take our style quiz at shopstylefinder.com. Go take the mini quiz. Uh, it's going to give you your style word. It's going to tell you a little bit about your body type and help you to overcome some of your style challenges. So go take that right now. 
come back. I'll put the link in the show notes and come back, listen to this again and figure out what your superpower is. And just know that you are exactly who you're supposed to be. And you do have a style. You just may have lost touch with it. So when you can cultivate that, it just helps you to bring out your essence and be your very best. If I can help you in any way to support you in your style journey, please reach out. I would love to chat with you. In the show notes, there's a link. You can set up a quick call with me. We can Zoom or Skype from anywhere in the world. And I would love to help you find your beautiful style and help you dress like you mean it. Have a beautiful day, ladies, and I will see you next time. I love you guys. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Style by Mary Michelle, where women come to get dressed in seven minutes or less. If you enjoyed this podcast, I invite you to leave me a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Style by Mary Michelle and shop our boutique at shopstylefinder.com for the best in upscale casual apparel. Better yet, if you're in the Raleigh area, come see us. We're located in the North Hills Shopping Center, the premier shopping district in Midtown Raleigh. For details and links mentioned in this episode, be sure to see the show notes. Have a beautiful week.